so much, Elizabeth. So that's great. We are starting right on time, which makes me very happy. As a clinical trainer, as an instructor, staying on time is always the most difficult aspect of my job. So we're, I'm very happy to see that we're starting on time, and thank you to all of you who logged in early to make that possible. So as Elizabeth already mentioned, I'd like to welcome you to this web seminar presented by Barnett on the topic of monitoring oncology clinical trials. The field of oncology research really has experienced some huge growth in the past dec decade or so, and there was actually a report published in January of 2013, so this would be three years old at this point in time, but that report, which was done by a group called the Analysis Group Incorporated, at that time, oncology agents represented 28% of all of the investigational agents that were in development at that time in our industry. So this increase in development in trials has certainly led to a growing demand for CRAs and monitors in the oncology arena. To that end, we've designed this course to provide you with an overview of maybe the oncology-specific characteristics or considerations both from a logistical uh, standpoint as well as clinical and, and ethical standpoint. So, so that's where we're going with our time today. Just like to take a moment to introduce myself. My name is, is Karen Gilbert. You see a photograph there. I've been in the clinical research industry since 1994 and have held various types of positions over that time. The vast majority of my experience is in monitoring. And I have about three years' experience exclusively in oncology monitoring, and, and that's what I've done pretty much full-time as a consultant. I, I serve as a contract monitor right now for some early phase oncology trials, and I've done that since uh, August 2014 pretty exclusively, other than the work I do with, with Barnett um, as a clinical trainer. So these are our learning objectives, and at the end of today's session, we really are hoping that you'll be able to apply the knowledge that we share and the knowledge you've learned to all of these monitoring tasks, again, specifically for studies in the oncology therapeutic area. We, we do assume with this course that the individuals and attendees have some generalized monitoring knowledge, so this is not a GCP course. We take the stand that, that you do have some monitoring experience and clinical operations, GCP knowledge, and we're going to really focus our time more on the complexities, the specific considerations for oncology trials, and especially as they relate to monitoring. We'll also share a little bit of information that might be able to be used for those of you who are more in project management or study management, so understanding what's happening at the sites and how it affects the monitors certainly has an impact on maybe the strategies that you want to use for study management, for monitoring plans, and things of that nature. I do want to kind of share with you ways in which I want you to be able to maximize the value of today's web seminar, so please feel welcome, first of all, to interrupt me at any time if you have a question or a comment. You can do this either by using that raised hand feedback button that you see on your screen, or you can send in a question on the chat function. I'll be constantly kind of referring back over to that chat window to make sure I'm seeing your questions there. There certainly will be opportunities as well as we move through the course to answer multiple choice, true, false, discussion questions, so we'll use the chat function and the web response for that. And then I want to point out in this, this uh, final bullet point here on this slide, whenever you see the arrow bullet point and this dark red font in the content, that indicates a monitoring tip. That's a, a take-home tip or a monitoring strategy. Those are going to represent ways that you can either identify potential risk and hopefully prevent their occurrence um, as you're working in the oncology arena, ways in which we hopefully can work smarter and not harder to be more effective in what we're trying to accomplish. So let's get started. To begin with, it's important, of course, to understand that the core GCP requirements do not differ between oncology trials and those in other therapeutic areas. So requirements for informed consent, appropriate investigator selection, and investigator responsibilities as detailed in the 1572, of course, still apply to oncology trials with investigational drugs. Furthermore, investigators are still required to maintain control of investigational products, and sponsors have standard responsibilities for providing information 
about the use and the storage of the IP, just as they do in other trials. Oncology trials, of course, have to be managed and conducted by qualified individuals at all levels, at the site, at the IRB, at the sponsor, at the CRO, and we want to work within quality systems that are designed to ensure the quality output and human subject protection. That, of course, a lot, one of the quality systems that we need is a robust monitoring SOPs and monitoring plans, and sponsors still are required to determine the appropriate extent and nature of monitoring in oncology trials. So none of these requirements really differ in oncology, but you may see some differences in how those requirements are satisfied in oncology trials and a little bit of a different approach, if you will, to, to managing trials as opposed to other therapeutic areas. Music